Yes, we make our own water for the lab and we start with the reverse osmosis water. This meter is precious for checking total dissolved solids. If you grab a pure water, then you're gonna get a very low reading, hmm, zero or maybe two or three parts per million. And then we can measure the reverse osmosis water that just came from there. And we're gonna get a low reading like nine. Single digits is good. If you go to a drinking station or a bottle refill station at the university, you're going to find a nasty reading, something like 406 ppm. And that's consistent because the carbon filters do not filter out dissolved solids. So this is 400 parts per million of what? Well, if it's a Texas tap water, then the biggest constituent is probably chloramine, which is a byproduct of chlorine added to the water processing. If you take pure water and add table salt, then you're measuring parts per million of NaCl, um, sodium chloride. If it's sea salt, then you're looking at minerals. And this is what we want to have in our water from the sea or from springs. This list is just a few of the minerals found in sea salt and sodium chloride is the largest one, but all of these trace minerals are really important for the body and they each have their own benefit. So I grab five gallons out of the reverse osmosis filter and then I use a sea salt solution to raise the PPM up to something in the 50s. And then we have good water. If somebody asked me to drink water from the university, I would rather drink rainwater from an old rusty basin. I've measured mud puddles here at like 5 to 10 ppm and I'm pretty sure that's cleaner than the campus water.